So we're in my garage and I'm gonna show you how I installed this electrical vehicle charging outlet all the way from start to finish. It starts with planning in the basement by the main electrical panel. I'm pretty confident that I can run this new conduit for the outlet up out of the panel along the raceway here in the conduit all the way straight down and then 90 degree and go in one of these joist bays and go straight towards the garage. So we're on the other side of the wall from the TV here. So the conduit can come in these joist bays and then over to this side where the garage wall is. Now you can see that floor vent right there going up into the kitchen. I'm gonna use that floor vent as a reference so I know which joist bay I can run the conduit in. So this is the mudroom going into the garage. That's the wall separating the mudroom from the garage. And then as you come in here into the kitchen, there's that floor vent. So I know that I should be able to go pretty much straight in line with that floor vent in that part of the wall right there and know that I'm gonna come down in the joist bay underneath the floor and be able to access the rest of the basement. So all I've gotta do is measure this out and pick a spot and cut into the wall. So based on my measurements, I cut a hole in the garage wall so that I could access the wall separating the garage from the mudroom and drill a hole for the conduit. All right, got through the bottom plate. Now I just gotta get through the subfloor. Oh. Boom. Next, I marked the location in the garage where the EV receptacle would be located. I used one inch EMT and one inch flex conduit for this project. So to connect my flex conduit to the box, um, I've got these clamp adapters and then to connect the flex to EMT I've got these clamp adapters. Works pretty easily. You take this red anti-short bushing which is used to prevent the wire from snagging on any of these cut metal edges. Even after you file them down they can still damage the sheathing. So you put this red bushing inside the flex conduit like that and then it fits pretty easily over each clamp. You can see that bushing comes all the way up to the little stop point and then you just tighten down the screws. And same thing for the box connector. Just fit that over. See the bushing comes right up to the edge and then tighten it down and then I can fit it into the box. I usually prefer to cut old work holes for electrical boxes using a jab saw rather than a rotary tool. Sometimes the rotary tool can slip on me and then I have to do an extra drywall repair. Here's the box secured to the blocking I installed, along with the mud ring. Here's the flex conduit going down through the wall and into the basement. And here you can see inside the wall how it is all connected. There's the flex conduit going up to the box, coming down into the wall, and then down through the bottom plate subfloor and into the basement. So to put in a electrical vehicle charging spot, um, all my breakers are full, but I have a sub panel over here that's got plenty of open spots. So um, the plan is going to be to take a couple of these circuits, move those over to the sub panel, and then that'll free up two spots here that I can use for a 60 amp breaker to power the charging receptacle. All right, you can see I got the flex conduit coming in from the garage down there. I uh, got it coiled up here temporarily. And I got my first piece of EMT conduit here with the EMT to flex adapter. The conduit isn't fastened to the joist or anything, just getting it up here for some perspective. And right now it's just sitting up here. So I gotta do some measuring, um, figure out how much more conduit I need before I can make the elbow on the other side of the wall uh, to then run the conduit in with the raceway on the other side. <laughs> There we go. Right. Now. There we go. Then I used my snips to clean up the edge of the flex conduit so that there was a nice square cut 
and no sharp edges or burrs. And then I'll just file those down, those sharp edges down or pinch them with pliers. Um, but then when I put that anti-short pushing in there, that should be fine for when I put it up in the, the connector. All right, so you can see I got the flex conduit coming in from the garage and coming in there and connected to the EMT. You can see the red bushing spacer that's in there. So I checked it, there's no snags or anything. Um, this is still loose right now, just so I can get the rest of the conduit placed, but uh, this end of it looks pretty good. The easiest way to access my panel for this job is gonna be from the side. So I cut out the section of the drywall between the two studs there, pulled out the insulation, and then staged the section of flex conduit that will connect the panel to the EMT. Next, I drilled the hole through the stud that the flex conduit would go through to connect to the panel. I was very careful to measure and drill very precisely so that the hole I drilled lined up exactly with the knockout in the panel and that the hole was plenty big enough for the box connector. I actually tested this on a scrap piece of lumber first to make sure that the flex conduit with the box connector on it would get through the size hole that I drilled and then actually cut a hole a little bit bigger. That way if my measurements were off a little bit, it still would connect. I did not want to have to cut that hole twice. Uh, then I just had to feed the conduit with the box connector on it through the hole and uh, tighten it down and lock it into the panel. So this is the piece of flex conduit that is now run inside the wall and connects to the main panel there. Okay, I've got the conduit partially run um, over to the garage. Uh, I still have that distance to go to the panel, but because I'm going to have um, more than 360 degrees of turns uh, plus connecting to flex, which can be tricky, I'm going to go ahead and start fishing the wire now halfway here. So I've got my wire set up. Uh, I'm going to fish the first part of it here all the way to the new receptacle, and then I'll use what's left to fish through the conduit and flex into the panel. Um, and I've done this before where you got to pull it through, and then at the last second, you got to tighten up the conduit um, and then snap it together. Um, it's a little bit tricky, but it should be fine. I've done it before. Here you can see I fished the remaining end of the wire through the next two pieces of conduit, including the connectors. And I've got this piece of conduit set up and ready to connect to the existing conduit that's already fastened to the joists. So now I'll lift this piece up. And at the same time that I fasten it to the joists, I'll fully insert it into the connector and then tighten that down. So I've got all the EMT run. That's the one inch EMT going all the way to the garage receptacle and coming over here to the panel. Um, I've got my flex conduit staged. Um, and the wires run, so next step will be to um, install the flex to EMT connector uh, and then fish the wires through the conduit and into the panel. Before I finished connecting all the wires to the panel, I went ahead and wired up the receptacle, uh, starting by cutting all the wires to length. So you can see on the back of the receptacle, it's got this little bar here that says strip gauge, so I know exactly how far back to strip the wire. I will tell you, these heavier gauge wires are a bear to strip than your typical 12 gauge or 14 gauge wire. For stripping the heavier gauge wire, the technique I found most effective was to take a utility knife, lightly score the sheathing at the distance I wanted, then take my lineman's pliers, bend them back and forth, uh, that starts to snap the sheathing. Then grab and twist clockwise, and that neatly broke off the sheathing at the exact distance I want, and the copper wires inside all stayed twisted together. Wiring these up is pretty easy. Ground neutral, hot and hot. Because this is a big receptacle and it's going in a metal box, I wrapped all the terminals in electrical tape just to be safe. So 
I've installed the 60 amp breaker. You can see no wires are connected to it yet. And up here, I've got one wire that I'm gonna use as a fish to pull the wire through the conduit. And now I just need to feed all of the, the main wires in through the flex conduit and into the panel. And then I can secure the flex conduit to the coupling there. Then it'll just be a matter of connecting the wires up to the breaker. So now you can see I finished, almost finished pulling the wire through here and plenty of wire coming out down here. Always good to have extra. So I'll finish pulling this through and then button it up. So there's a new breaker wired up. You can see I got the neutral going to a neutral lug up there and the ground to a grounding bar back there. So we're all set to go here. Uh, I'm just gonna leave it off for now, but there you go. And there you have it. Then I just covered up the panel, labeled the new breaker, put the cover plate on the receptacle, and we're good to go. Hope you enjoyed the video.